Welcome to Acids and Bases and Salts. In part one of this unit, we are going to be talking about electrolytes and what they are and properties of acids and bases and salts. Let's get started. So first of all, an electrolyte is a substance whose aqueous solution conducts a current. Electrolyte conducts electricity. The solution conducts due to ions that are present in the solution. All acids and bases and salts are electrolytes. All of them are electrolytes because of the ions present when they're dissolved in water. Now, some of them are strong electrolytes, which means that it conducts a current very well. And some of them are weak electrolytes, which means it conducts a current to some extent. The strong electrolytes, the compound exists totally as ions in solution. Since there's only ions in solution that conducts the current very well. But weak electrolytes conduct the current only to some extent because the compound exists as ions and molecules in solution. S-O-L-N for solution. So since there's both ions and molecules, it doesn't conduct electricity quite as well. So there's two ways of forming an electrolytic solution. First of all, we have an ionic compound dissolving in water, and this is called dissociation. In this case, the water pulls the ions apart when the substance is dissolved. So we have NaCl, which turns into Na plus and Cl minus. So that ionic compound is just breaking in half. We also have polar covalent compounds dissolved in water. This is ionization. The compound will react with water to form ions in solution. So the HCl is reacting with the water, and the HCl is giving a hydrogen, so we become H3O plus and Cl minus. And HF, same thing, it's giving a hydrogen, so we get H3O plus and F minus. The difference between these two, they say one's strong and one's weak. Check out the arrows. On the top equation, there's a single arrow saying that the reaction turns into ions, and that's it. In the bottom equation, there's a double arrow saying that the reaction will turn into the ions, but then it will turn back into the molecules, which is why it doesn't conduct electricity quite as well. So now acids. Let's just talk about some characteristics of acids. These are general physical properties that you can kind of see in a lab or kind of observe. So first of all, taste. Not that you should taste anything in a lab, but if you happen to taste something that is food, you can tell it's acidic because it tastes sour. Acids taste sour, so think of um, maybe orange juice or lemon juice or vinegar. These things taste sour. Um, acids have a pH that is less than 7. You can measure this with a pH meter if you're in the lab. Acids neutralize bases. So they kind of cancel them out. Um, if you have a couple of indicators like phenolphthalein, phenolphthalein is a fun word to write and spell. And it is clear in an acid. Uh, litmus paper. Litmus paper can be either blue or pink, or blue or red, and for acids, it's going to be the red. And then the other thing is how acids react. Like, if you're in a lab and you have an acid and you put it with a metal, an acid plus a metal will pretty much always make hydrogen gas. An acid with a metal will pretty much always make hydrogen gas. If you put it with a carbonate, By the way, that's a CO3 minus 2 ion, so sodium carbonate or potassium carbonate. That's going to make carbon dioxide gas. So those are some of the physical properties that you can observe in a lab. In a little bit, we're going to talk about the actual definition of, of acids. So the strength of an acid will depend on its degree of ionization in water. Strong acids ionize 100%. 100% ions, which means 100% um, things that conduct electricity. But weak acids only undergo partial ionization. They don't completely ionize. Note that this is not the same 
as concentrated and dilute, which refer to the molarity of the solution only. Strong acids can be dilute, and weak acids can be concentrated. So strong acids can burn you if you get them on your skin, if they are very concentrated, but they can also do nothing to you as if they were water if they're very dilute. The concentrated and dilute refers to the molarity, which is what we think of as strength, whether it's dangerous or not. But the word strong has to do with how much it ionizes, not how dangerous it is. Now you've got a list of strong acids to remember. You are going to have to memorize these. The College Board expects you to know them off the top of your head. If any of these six acids are listed, they expect you to know that these are strong acids. Hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, nitric, sulfuric, and chloric acids. Memorize those. One more little bit of acid vocabulary. Monoprotic. Mono means one, so there's one. Protic means proton. A proton is just a hydrogen ion, so notice this is HCl with one H, or HNO3 with one H. Diprotic means that there are two protons. Di means two, so it's H2SO4. Polyprotic means that there's more than one, so it could be two or it could be three. So H2SO4 or H3PO4, anything that's got more than one proton. We're going to get more into that a little bit later. All right, bases. So these characteristics of bases are things that you can observe in a lab or in real life. First of all, they taste. Now, I don't expect you to taste anything in a lab, but if you happen to come in contact with something that you taste and it tastes bitter, it's probably because it's a base. A good example of that is soap. And let's say you're washing your face with face soap and some of that soap gets in your mouth. It tastes very bitter, and that tells you that it is a base. Also, it has a pH that is greater than 7. This can be measured with a pH meter. A base will neutralize an acid. A base will turn a phenylphthalein, which is an indicator. Pink. Almost the same color as the ink that I'm writing with right now. It's a pink magenta-y color. But litmus paper... Blue. Litmus paper will turn blue in a base. And then... Another thing about bases, another characteristic, and you can say, I, I know this is a base, is how it feels. Bases tend to feel slippery. And the reason why they feel slippery, think of soaps or something, is because it breaks down fat and grease. So when you get soap on your fingers, it's breaking down the oils in your fingers and reducing the friction in between your fingertips, which makes it feel slippery. So bases will break down fats and greases and oils. One way that I like to remember some of these character characteristics is that bitter bases turn litmus blue. Bitter bases, litmus blue. Those are some ways to remember those physical characteristics of bases. So the strength of bases, just like the strength of acids, depends on its degree of ionization in water. Strong bases ionize 100%, and weak bases only undergo partial ionization. Note that this is not the same as concentrated and dilute, which refer to the molarity of the solution only. Strong bases can be dilute, and weak bases can be concentrated. So again, you can have a base, a strong base, that's not dangerous to come in contact with because its molarity is so low that it won't hurt your skin. You could also have a weak base that is very dangerous to come in contact with because its molarity is so high that it can hurt your skin. So strong and weak is not dangerous or not dangerous. Strong and weak refer to only the degree of ionization. You have to memorize these strong bases. Any metal in group 1 or 2 with OH-, minus, so that'd be like NaOH or KOH or CaOH2 or MgOH2, you have to just memorize those. The College Board expects you to know strong bases off the top of your head. And then a little bit of base vocabulary. Monobasic means one base, so only one hydroxide group. That'd be like NaOH with one OH. Or dibasic, 
which is two hydroxide groups, so CaOH2. Just in case you come in contact with that vocabulary later, you'll recognize it. All right, well, that's acids and bases, some general physical properties and electrolyte properties as well. I hope you join me next time.